Hello, welcome to the second part of the Introduction to Proofs videos on sets. My name is Professor Michael Polyuk. Last time, we, we introduced basic notions of set, element, and subsets. And now we're going to investigate some particularly special type of sets. And we're going to start by looking at something that's kind of strange. So let's start with this question. How many elements does the set B, which is 0, 1, and A, have? How many elements does this have? Well, the first thing you'll realize is that it depends on A. So what would happen if A was 0? Well, what would the elements of this be? Just 0 and 1. Remember that sets don't care about repetition. How would this change if A was 2? Well, here, B would have three elements, 0, 1, and 2. Now, finally, the most confusing, if A was the set 0, 1, then how many elements would B have? In this case, it would have three things inside of it, 0, 1, and the set with 0 and 1 inside of it. Again, it's helpful to think about sets as boxes that contain things. So this set B is the box that has three things in it, 0, 1, and A, and A itself is a box, in this case, that has two other things inside of it. This leads us to an important definition, the empty set. The empty set is the set without any elements. We denote it by this zero with a bar through it. Let's look at the, a similar question to the previous one, except this time we're going to have just the set containing A. And our question is, how many elements does this set have? If A is zero, then B has one thing in it, zero. What if A is equal to two? B will again only have one element in it. If A is a set, how many things will it have in it? Well, still one. If A is in particular the empty set, it'll still only have one element, the empty set. So this leads us to um, a kind of strange result at first, which is that the empty set is not equal to the set containing the empty set. This tends to confuse quite a few people, I think perhaps because some people were taught that they are the same thing, and they're, that, that's not the case. When we use the set notation, it means a box with this stuff inside of it. So the thing on the left is the box with nothing in it. The thing on the right is a box inside of a box. So those two things are different. Now we move on to set builder notation. Set builder notation gives us a compact way of describing many different types of sets. So if A is a set and P of X is a property of X, such as X is even or X is greater than seven, then the way that this set is described is it's the set of all x in A such that P of x is true. Put another way, it's all x in A that have this one property. Let's look at some examples. This set is read left to right, the collection of all x in the integers such that x is greater or equal to 1 and less than pi. What integers do that? Well, it's the integers 1 and 2. The collection of all natural numbers, such that x is less than 5, is 1, 2, 3, 4. One that you've seen before, the, the rationals, it's the collection of all p over q, such that p is in the integers and q is in the naturals. This is a slightly different way of rewording the set builder notation. Here, instead of just x in a set, we describe the form of it, and then here we use it to run over all possible um, choices of p and q. So it tells you where p and q have to live, and the thing on the left is the form of it. Both of these are acceptable. One thing that won't make a lot of sense right now, but we'll come back to, 
is when we're trying to prove things about set builder notation, it's handy to know uh, an alternate rewording of this. So some element y, some object y is an element of the set you've used to build set builder notation with if it has two properties. One, it has to be in A because we're ranging over all things in A and not outside of A. And second, y has to be true, p of y has to be true. So those are the two conditions that you need to be inside of the set. Now we look at set equality. For two sets A and B, we say that A is equal to B if A is a subset of B and B is a subset of A. Notably here, this is a definition. This tells us what it means for two sets to be equal. So if ever we need to prove that two things are equal, this is the definition we go back to. To reword it slightly, the proof technique for showing that A is equal to B is if you want to show that A is equal to B, you need to show that A is a subset of B and B is a subset of A. You need to do both of those things. This is called the double subset technique. It will show up a bunch uh, in this class. Later on, we're going to see an alternate technique for proving that A is equal to B. And uh, I'll mention it now, even though we won't really, we'll, we'll try to avoid it. So if you're trying to show that A is equal to B, if you unwrap what the subset definitions mean, they're implications. And so if you're trying to prove both implications, it's an if and only if. So if you want to show that A is equal to B, you can instead show that X is an element of A, if and only if X is an element of B. One thing you need to be careful of is that if you're lazy, you shouldn't use the second one. So I, I leave that as a warning for you. Avoid using this alternate technique if you're lazy. And the reason I say that is because when you use the second technique, it seems very tempting to just write if and only if at every stage, but sometimes you'll have just a one-way direction arrow, but you'll write if and only if um, because you're not checking everything. So please avoid the second one um, unless you're checking every single step. Here are some exercises for you. Write out the elements of this set that's written using set builder notation. Use the formal definition of subset to prove this subset. Express the even integers using set builder notation. For a set A, any set A, show that the empty set is a subset of A. And give an example of sets A and B such that A is an element of B and A is a subset of B are both true. Let's end with some reflections. What is the difference between saying X is an element of A and A is a subset of B? Think of a real life example of a set with a subset. Is it possible for A to be a subset of B and B to be a subset of A? What about X being an element of A and A being an element of X? Can those things happen at the same time? Finally, are these two things equal? Why or why not? Thank you very much. Hope you have a good day.